Hello DevOps and Platform Engineers, welcome to this video. So today I want to talk about Docker environment variables, configurations and management. So what are the various ways we can configure environment variables in Docker? So let's get into it. So the idea of isolating and configuring important information about your application has always been around, but it became much more standardized with the release of the 12 factor app design principles. So if you don't know what the 12 factor app design principles are, there are a set of methodologies that was released sometime in the year 2011 by the folks at Heroku. And they came about this after building so many applications and seeing what the best practices are around that. So one of the 12 factors is config management, which you have here, which says store your configurations in environment variables. So that's kind of how the standard became very popular. And this is very important because when you do this, you're able to pass your application across environments with very minimal changes. So you can take the same set of application and have it in a staging, a test and a production environment. It's basically no change at all, just changing the environment in which the application runs. So if you're building cloud native applications, then you probably already know about managing environment variables in your configurations. So configurations could be API keys, you know, IP addresses that you use, constants and anything basically that can change from one environment to another. I'm going to show you how you can manage this in Docker. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how you can manage this in a Docker or Docker Compose environment. So the first way you can manage environment variables in Docker is using the Docker file. If you have a Docker workflow, you can just go in there into the Docker file and put your environment variables in there with the defaults that they have. So right here, I have a very simple go Dockerized application with Docker Compose as well. So you can go in there and just put the environment variables in the Docker file. So the Docker file has this EMV key, which you can use to set the environment variables. Now you can see here I'm passing just default values. As you can see, I have a DB user, DB password, of course, this is a file that you commit into your Git repository, so you don't want to put your actual credentials in there, but just for a test environment, or maybe the, the credentials that you can use uh, locally for a developer. Like if a developer is running your application locally on your workstation, then you can put sample um, credentials in here that they can use to spin off a local database or whatever, but don't put your actual credentials in there. So that's the very first way you can manage um, your environment variables. And here I just set multiple uh, variables by just uh, using the Linux um, slash command to split them in a very nice, uh, format, nicely formatted way. Now, the second way you can set these environment variables is in your Docker Compose file. If you have uh, Compose, so if you're using Docker Compose. Now, every environment variable in the Docker stack is in a hierarchy. Okay, so you have your Docker file, you have your Compose file, and there's a hierarchy between these two. So when you have your Docker environment variable set in your Docker file, and you have a Compose file where you specify your environment variables as well, every environment variable that you set in your Compose file overrides whatever you've already set in your Docker file. So you have to be aware of this because I've seen developers that go ahead sometimes and change the uh, environment variable that's in the Docker file, not knowing that there's one in the compose file that overrides that. So there's something you need to be aware of. If you set an environment variable in here in your compose file, these environment variables are, are, are added at container start time, right? So at container runtime. So when the container runs, all of these environment variables are mounted in and it overrides whatever you may have already set in your Docker file. Now, this is a very clean way I find to manage environment variables. So something I like to do is to use uh, Docker Compose aliases and or YAML anchors, whatever you want to call them. So this is a way in which you can declare reusable configurations in your Docker Compose file. So when I have a set of environment variables or certain parts of my Docker Compose configurations, in this case, environment variables, that I want to share across services. So here I have just a service called Postgres and another service called the product API that uses uh, the configurations of the Postgres uh, database. So here at the very top here, I've defined uh, an extension. So this is called Docker Compose extension fields. So it starts with an X. So as long as you start with an X and then the name of the extension you want to create uh, using the YAML anchors, 
And then you can define the variables that you want to set. And here I'm setting a debug mode, an EMV key, and a DB name. I'm just assuming, this is an example, so I'm just assuming this is a set of environment variables that are going to be duplicated across my, across my other services as well. So instead of putting this same uh, configurations repeatedly in every single service, I can avoid that by just declaring them one time at the top here and then reusing them by just calling those anchors, right? By just using this uh, YAML syntax to uh, say I want to reference those um, uh, fields that have been declared here at the very top. So this ensures that those fields are available here in this under this environment key and then I'm adding a couple more that's specific to my Postgres uh, application. So something you'll notice here is I've set my environment variables here as variables themselves because this is referencing some variables that I've set up in the .env file. Now this is optional and you don't have to do it this way because usually the .env file is never committed to your git um, repository. So in this case, you can have a .env if you want to load that or change the configurations locally, for example, for your application. And here what I'm doing is just saying um, load those values into these environment variables for me by default. But you don't have to do it that way. You can decide to not have an .env file uh, at all and just declare the variables directly in here. But I just find this as a nicer setup so I can set up my own specific environment variables here if I want to. Okay, so what this does is, is to ensure that those environment variables get passed into my containers when they're started. And we can test that out by just starting our services here. I could compose up. Just going to run a build to build them as well. And that should load all our environment variables into uh, the containers when they get started. Okay, so we have our database up and running. And then uh, we have this depends on key here, which ensures that the database is up and has a healthy status before the product API service gets started. Okay, so the product API is also up now and we can verify that our application is running. And here we have the Postman extension. I'm just going to make a HTTP call to my service. Now I know my service is running on port 3000. So you can see here, and this is in the parts from the environment uh, variable that we declared. And it's connecting to a database. And if I do a get, you can see we have some data there. We can do a post as well to confirm that our service is working. And here I'm just going to change this to LG. And the post request, and we have that working as well. So we have all our data sets uh, getting created. Okay, so now something we're going to do uh, as well, just to confirm everything, we're going to change the environment variables a bit. So right in here, I'm going to load a different set of environment variables. Uh, some other way you can overwrite these environment variables is by setting them directly on the terminal as well. So now you know, um, you know application is connecting to the database on the DB pod that we specify. And our DB pod, as you can see here, is um, a pod 5432. I can overwrite that as well at the point at which I start uh, the compose services. If I do the cut compose, or rather I can do this DB um, pod, and I'm going to set that to 5433, and then do a Docker compose up again. Okay. Now what this will do is start up my services, but then Docker Compose is smart enough to know that I'm trying to override this environment variable. So what we should see is our application should fail to start because the application is trying to connect to the database on port 5433. Okay. But our database is running on port 5432. So we should get a connection error. And as you can see, yeah, that's failing as well. So Docker is able to detect these changes in real time if I want to override them. Okay, so that's one way uh, we can override those. And some other, another way you can set environment variables or manage these configurations in Docker is using a Docker entry point file. So in your Docker file here, here you can see here, I'm just running my application directly, but I can define an entry point to a shell, uh, uh, to a shell script 
that maybe loads the environment variables and put them in a configuration file that my application can access. Depending on the kind of application I'm running, if it's a very old legacy application usually that requires configurations to be loaded from uh, a config file, you can do that as well. Okay, so uh, in this case, and this is typical of what you see in like uh, images that are shared or open source software, usually they have uh, an entry point file that kind of loads your configuration and the environment into a file. And we can take a look at that by looking at the Docker Hub. Um, if we go to Docker Hub and we take a look at our search for so the MySQL image, for example. And we go into one of the images that we have there. Yeah, uh, you can see here the certain environment variable, but very at the very bottom you see they define an entry point file. It's a docker entry point the shell file. So this is just a set of scripts that run when this application starts, and you can decide to set and unset your environment variables in there as well. Whatever works for you, just make sure you know all the options that are available. So you can see here they're loading in all the environment uh, variables here. And that's something you can do as well. Now, finally, I want to talk about what shouldn't go into your environment variables or what shouldn't you shouldn't set as environment variable configurations. And this could be technically anything can be set as an environment variable, but environment variables are much more likely to be exposed or are much more vulnerable um, and easy targets for hackers or attackers, right? Because if someone gets access to your running containers, for example, in this case, let's start up my application again, like we had before. If I start up my application again, you'll see that I can access everything in the environment variables from the container. So I'm just going to start up a new uh, shell session here. Okay, my application is running now. And if I do a docker compose exec into um, the product API, I think that's what we call it, uh, product API. And I just run a shell command. Okay. Um, okay, so that's not the name of the container. So let's see. Uh, product, okay, it's product hyphen API. Okay. Now I have a shell session into that container. If I just do print env, you can see I can see all the environment variables that are set here. Okay, so this can be a security uh, risk for my application. So I may not want to do this at all. So for very sensitive credentials, it's often advisable to use maybe a secret manager. If you want to learn about how you can do this with secret manager, let me know in the comment section and I'll do a short video explaining how you can um, do that. So typically for me and most of my applications, I like to use Google Secret Manager and just read those credentials in the application in real time. And those credentials get used. So for example, my database credentials, I read it directly from Secret Manager, use that to connect to database. And if you go into the container, you do a print env, you don't see the database connection credentials because it's just in memory, right? That's a much more secure approach for very sensitive credentials like database passwords, for example, for your live uh, applications. But everything else technically can be put in an environment variable as configuration that uh, changes from environment to environment. And that's it for this video. Hope you've learned something. Leave comments like this video if you've learned something. And if you want to see about how to use Secret Manager to manage your secrets, let me know in the comment as well and I'll do a video talking about that. So thank you for watching this video. If you learned something, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you get notified when new content drop. And this channel will learn about DevOps, SRE, platform engineering and everything that has to do with the workflow from getting code from a local developer environment all the way to production. So don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and watch out for future videos. Until then, have a good one.